Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Philippians. Philippians. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. We're going to look at a familiar verse. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. 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 The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Brother Jay, can you pray for the message? The title of the message is Dead in Christians. Dead in Christians. Dead in Christians. The Bible verse says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. However, you know, many Christians do not conform or practice this verse, where you can do all things through Christ, which strengthens you. And in return, you become dead-end Christians. When you drive, the last thing you want to do is hit a dead-end. When you're going somewhere and you have to get there on time, you do not want to hit dead-end. Yesterday, coming to church on 10th Freeway, if you know that stretch over there by, what is it, uh, Montebello? Of Puente, it's Puente, it's in Montebello or over here, coming this way, Ontario Upland. Stretch where it turns into just one single you know, road on the left side, and it has a bunch of you know, blocks blocking it. Did you ever imagine that some cars will ever get into an accident in that single lane? And once that happens, what happens? You can't get out. You know, it's not like you know, open road. You know, that's why you know, I never thought about it. And I drive that area many, many times, you know, every Sunday and on the weekend. But guess what happened yesterday? You know, yesterday, there was an accident right in that, you know, it, it looks like a carpool lane, and it has a, it's blocked off, you know, by those cinder blocks. So there's no way you could come out. However, you know, they're split into two. Two lanes. When you're staying in there, say you're driving from carpool, it just turns into a, you know, just anybody could come in, and they split into another road. And so a bunch of, you know, cars blinking, just red lights, full of red lights. And, and some people are just coming off. So, and I decided to come off, you know, praise the Lord for that. And as you drive off, as, as you go off for like a few miles, I'm talking about a few miles, you know, and then these cars, hundreds, maybe thousands of cars are just stuck over there. But the rest of the cars on the right side, you know, four or five lanes are just driving up. And then you start seeing people coming out of their cars. Motorcycles stopped. And then they're trying to see what's going on. And what do you know? There were two to three car accident, you know, right before the exit, mind you of that you know, section. And all those cars were stuck there. For how long? I don't know. You, know, you have to wait for you know, ambulance, you know, fire truck, you know, tow truck, 
police or how patrol, everybody has to come out, then you'd have been stuck there for like hour two. And imagine if you, in your life, right, because you weren't paying attention, you just hit something like that. And you have places to go. And as Christians, you have a lot of places to go. You have to go a lot of places to do God's work. However, you're just stuck there. And God gave you many, many warnings. If you see a roll of, you know, hundreds of cars just stuck there, not moving at all, you know, it's a sign that, you know, there's different ways to go. You should get out of the lane. Dead in Christians refuse to get out of their lane. They're just stuck in that lane. They have that, you know, just one single point of view. I'm just going to go this way no matter what. No matter what God tells me, no matter what the Bible tells me, no matter what the preaching tells me, I'm just going to go straight ahead. I'm going to go my way or the highway, right? And as you go your own way, eventually what's going to happen is you're going to hit that block. You're going to hit that dead end. And you're going to be stuck there. For a lot of people, at least during that traffic accident, you know, after an hour or two, you're out of it. Right? Hopefully you don't have to go to the bathroom or anything. And you know, I think the last thing you want is, you know, you have to go, you're really, you have to go like number two or whatnot, right? And then you're stuck there. I mean, it's not like you could walk across the freeway when the other side cars are coming, you know, 60, 70, 80 miles per hour. That's the last thing, you know, you wish on anybody, right? To go through that thing. However, your Christian life has many times hit that kind of place where you don't even know. That's the sad part. Because you're so stubborn, because you're in your own world, because you're so selfish, when there are a lot of warning signs coming your way, hey, don't go that way. You know, that's a dead end. Don't go that way. You got to be stuck there for a while. Don't go that way. You'll never get out of it. You're constantly hearing, you know, God's warning, but you still refuse, and then you get stuck there. Funny thing is that one car, it was the last car who was stuck there because, you know, many of the cars, you know, we already knew that we were all getting out. But this car, say from where I'm standing to the entrance, so the car is where the entrance is. And if he backs up all the way, and here's the opening, and he could actually go out, go out of that state. And then he had his blinker on, so I'm not sure whatever happened of him. You know? I mean, if I were him, I would try to come back, right? You know, honk and just come all the way back and try to get out, because you know, you'll save at least like an hour or two. Sometimes God will give you a way out, even though you are stuck. You're completely stuck in people's eyes. And you know there are cars coming behind you, behind you everywhere. You see it through your mirror, rear view mirror. Everybody's coming. But God stops them from approaching you. And that's God's grace many times, you know, in your Christian walk and God's mercy. Imagine if you were to if you had to pay for all of your sins that you committed before and after, like on the spot, each time you committed your sin. You know, imagine if you, got, if you got spanked for every sin that you committed. You know, I mean, would you even have a behind, right? I mean, would you have a different color of skin on your behind? Probably, right? I mean, we have young ones laughing. Probably they're going through it right now. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, discipline is a good thing, especially if it's done the right way. And many times, you know, Christians just refuse to get out of that dead end. Right? You are struggling. You're struggling to go to that, you know, get out of that dead end each day of your life. But it's 
It's like a Groundhog Day. It's a repeated recycling of same thing happening over and over and over and over. You hit a dead end witnessing to someone. And it's still dead end because you don't do anything about it. It's like, I've hit a dead end with this person. You know, maybe some of you guys try to witness to that person. Some of you never did. And you're like, you know what? That's it. I'm stuck here. I'm just going to leave my car, and I'm just going to go. What's going to happen to your car? What's going to happen to that person? They'll be stuck at the dead end rest of their life. And with that dead end, it's straight highway to hell. And when you think about people stuck at dead ends, it's, it's like, wow, there's like no hope. And as many Christians feel these days and age, right? Even though you have hope of joy in you, you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Many people are missing something. And there's a bunch of dead ends in their heart. And when you don't recognize that, then you're going to be stuck there forever. You're going to be stuck at your dead end until you go to heaven. I mean, if you're saved or the day of the rapture. So when someone, when you see unsaved person is stuck at a dead end, and then you meet that person, I mean, what are you doing? Right? I mean, in certain cases, like Carlos and his son, right? They're stuck at a dead end, but someone rescued them, and they got saved. And that's something that's got to happen in your life. Because don't tell me that you don't have many, many dead end people surrounding your life. Either all your friends are just church people, you don't work, you don't go out ever, or you got to know some people, many people in your life, who's stuck at a dead end as an unsaved person who needs to get out of there. I think it's sad this day and age where people just don't care about other people. I mean, just not as just Christians, but just general human being. You know, there's no sense of giving. If someone, especially, is going through a you know, trouble, what's the first thing that people do nowadays? They just ignore, right? Even though we have a good Samaritan, you know, rule, like, a lot of people, if someone's going through, you know, mugging or there's crime happening, you know, we're not asking or, you know, I'm not even asking you go there and fight, right? You know, unless your brother Nathan over there you know, or Dakota or something, you know, tag team it. However, I mean, you could yell, you could call the police, you could do something about it. You don't have to just stand there and just be a bystander and don't do anything. You know, you don't want to do that. You don't want that to happen to you or your family, right? If you're going through trouble, if someone's mugging you, right? And if something bad is happening, I mean, do you want like, people to just ignore you and just stand there? Right. When you look at that kind of situation and when you look at your heart, what you would do in those kind of circumstances, it will show what kind of person you are. It will show whether you are a dead-end Christian or you are someone that is willing to do something for the Lord Christian. You are someone who says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Dead in Christians will never say this verse. Right? You're struggling with sin. You're struggling with your flesh. You're, you're at a dead end. You're committing the same sin over and over and over. You just can't get out of it. Right? You're stuck there. And before you do anything, have you ever thought about, you know what? I can't defeat this sin because Bible says I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. 
Many people have given up. And maybe you might have given up, right? I've done everything I could. You know, I've gotten saved. I go to a Bible-believing church. I listen to Bible-believing messages. You know, I read the Bible. I pray. I do everything. But every other day, you know, I fall. Every other day, I drive to the same dead end. You know, it's happening over and over and over. Whatever it may be, why is that happening? Because sometimes you're trying to defeat it or trying to get out of it on your own. You have to realize that you are very weak. Whoever you are, you are very weak. When you start thinking that I can do all things through me, who strengthens me, then you're going to fall. Then you're going to constantly hit that dead end. Don't think that these things happening for no reason in your life. You're hitting dead ends in your life because you're relying on yourself on many of the things instead of Christ who strengthens you. If someone who is doing things for his own good all the time, what does that show? Just normal, selfish human being. I mean, that's a normal thing. And you, many times, will only do things for yourself. I mean, it's, it's normal, right? As a human being, you know, as a flesh, you know, having old nature, and you just care about your own feelings, hey, you know, that's just, that's just how you were born. But as Christians, you shouldn't be like that. You shouldn't be conformed to just your old nature. You hit a lot of dead end because you are just a selfish human being who only cares about your own feelings, right? You don't care about other people. You don't care about your own family household. All you care about is your own feeling, right? That's why church has gossips. That's why church has splits. That's why, you know, there's infighting. Why? Because people are so selfish, they're just stuck at a dead end, and they don't want to get out of it, right? So they just start bringing more people to the dead end together. You know what is a funny sight, but sad sight? When you know that's a dead end, but people are continually following. One car after another car after another car. It's a human psychology is very, very... You know, interesting. People won't do it on their own. I don't know about you, but many people will never do it on their own. When someone takes the first step, then they people start following, right? When, say, if you're at a fast food drive through and there are two lanes, and all the cars are on a single lane, Everybody goes to that single lane, even though the other lane's open. You, know? you go to the other lane, second lane, and you get your order a lot sooner and faster. But no, you, know, you just tend to just follow whatever you know, other people are doing. And as Christians, you have to look at yourself right now. I mean, why am I struggling so much, you know, with certain things in my life, especially when it comes to sin, right? Why are you struggling so much? Because you keep on hitting that dead end over and over and over. I mean, the main reason is because you still think that you could do it on your own. Even though you listen to all the good preaching, even though you read the Word of God, you, inside of you, that old nature is keep on telling you, you could do this. Don't rely on the Lord. Don't rely on the Lord. You could do this. You are the man. You can do this. You know, you can do it. Just don't rely on the Lord. Then there's a temporary patchwork solution. Somehow, because you think you're strong, 
You don't do it, you, you know, for a day, two, even a month. However, what happens? Once your circumstance change, once um, troubles happen in your life, once you become weak and you fall, you go to the dead end over and over and over and again. It just tells you it's a common occurrence amongst Christians that you do not find your strength in Christ. I mean, did you wake up this morning and apply this verse in your life? You know what? Today, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Or were you like, today, I can do all things through me, who strengthens me. I mean, big difference, right? That's why you have a, such a big emotional highs and lows. Why? Because you thought it was going to be okay, you following you. But you hit a dead end. So when you hit the dead end, what happens? You feel sad, right? I don't know about you. Who, who feels good? You know, you're driving for a while. You have to go to this destination. I say a lot of kids, right? Kids like theme parks. So you're taking your kids to Disneyland. And you're really close to it. But you make a wrong turn. And then you're, you, instead of being at Disneyland, you know, you're at SeaWorld. Right? I don't know if the kids like SeaWorld or not, but you know, they don't like fish. And they're, they're really angry. And they're, you're stuck at that place. How long would it take for you to go get back to Disneyland with California traffic, LA traffic from San Diego SeaWorld? I don't know, maybe three, four hours during traffic hours? I mean, that's what's happening constantly in your life. And but you, unless you truly recognize and you truly come to the Lord and confess your sins, for always relying on yourself to resolve things, to defeat sins, to accomplish something, then you'll never change. That's why some people, they did a lot of things for God during the early days of their Christian days, after they get saved, right? They were so new, they needed help in every little thing. So they did not rely on themselves. They just constantly rely on the Lord to give wisdom, understanding, and knowledge to grow. And they saw, you know, like church, ministry, preachings, preachers, Bible, all these great literatures as something that will strengthen them. But as the years pass by, stubbornness, pride, you know, indifference, whatever you call it, sets in. And what happens? You're just stuck. I mean, you're just stuck. And you're actually reversing. You're reversing, right? You're stuck at a dead end, but you're going the wrong way, right? If I'm stuck at a dead end, what do you do? You punch in your GPS or you call someone, you know, if it's a newer road, and try to find the right direction. Because you yourself can't do it on your own, right? You don't know the area. Say if you're in Mammoth, bear, there are a lot of bears over there, brown bears. I mean, are you willing to just walk around the forest by yourself? Say you're in Montana, right? You hit a dead end, grizzly country. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to walk around. You're not. You're going to call forest service. You're going to call highway patrol, or whatever, who could help you so that you could get to the right place. You could get to safety. However, in Christian walk, you don't call Lord Jesus Christ. You never do. You, you just are stuck. You're like, wait, I'm stuck right now. So who should I call? I'm going to call my mom. I'm going to call my dad. You know, I'm going to call my wife, I'm going to call my husband, you know, I'm going to call my coworkers, I'm going to call everybody. 
Sometimes you get the right answers, you know, if they're godly people, but, you know, that's not the point. You call everybody except Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord says, you know what? If you call me, I would have given you right answer, right place to go within a few minutes. But since you went after everybody else, it took you years to get out of that situation. It took you years to get out of you know, that bare country. You know, wouldn't it be scary, though, when you are relying on something other than Lord Jesus Christ to get out of your dead end? And someone says, okay, just go north you know, for two miles and go east afterwards for one mile, and you'll find safety. And before you know it, you're in a deeper, deeper, and more deep, you know, trouble in the mountains, right? If you were stuck in a mountain by yourself, and you know there are big bears, hungry bears going after you, I mean, I don't know how strong you are, how brave you are, courageous you are, there's going to be thoughts coming through you where like, you know what? You know, today might be last day, right? Today might be the last day. However, if you have conviction in the Lord Jesus Christ, where you can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me, then there shouldn't be any dead end in your Christian walk, right? Whether it is sin that you have to face on a daily basis, whether it's just a life's troubles, whether it's physical ailments, right? Illness, it shouldn't be seen as a dead end because you can find strength in the Lord Jesus Christ. If I'm going through trouble, right, do I want my solace? Do I want comfort from a human being's words, right? Because a lot of people go to psycho psychiatrists, psychologists for that reason. Right? A lot of people go there, you know what? I'm having a bad day. I feel like I'm, I'm hitting dead end in my life. You know, Make me feel good. Make me feel better. And what do they do? They just tell you things that you want to hear, you know, prescribe you some medicines so that you, know, you could be high or something or you don't have to feel anything. But those are all temporary. After a day or two, it just disappears, and you're back at the same place. You're back at the dead end. Where should you go for solution? Where should you be? You should be on your knees and going to the Lord. You should be talking to the Lord for any, any issues of your life. Dead end. It's inevitable. As Christians, you're going to hit dead end over and over and over. Because you and I are strangers and pilgrims in this world. And our conversation is in heaven. Our citizenship is in heaven. So we're stranger here on earth. When, when you go to a different country and you don't speak their language at all, you're going to hit a lot of dead ends, right? You're at a restaurant. Say you're in Cambodia. And there are a lot of, you know, different type of food there. There's scorpions, you know. There's like bugs that you've never seen. You know, there's snakes, you know. You, you name it, it's all there. You know, southern China or China. If you don't speak their language, what's going to happen? You're going to be hitting dead end, right? There's no pictures next to it, only the words. Let me have C. And so they bring out scorpion. You're like, no. Let me have D, you know. No, you know, those are like snakes, you know. Let me have A, you know. You're going to hit that in. And in this world, you're a stranger and a pilgrim. You're, gonna, you're, you're supposed to hit that in. You, you're going to face situations where you will know the answers. You will know 
That's why you have to go to someone who knows the answer, who will give you conviction and who will give you strength. And who's that? That's no other than Lord Jesus Christ. That's why no Christian should be a dead-end Christian. You shouldn't be stuck at anywhere when you have someone to go to. You shouldn't be stuck anywhere just sitting down when you have someone to give you strength on a daily basis. As we go back to that sin problem, which hinders you day after day after day, whether it's your stubbornness, whether it's your pride, whether it's your lust, whether it's your covetousness, whatever the sin it might be or may be, you can get out of that dead end if you trust and if you find strength in the Lord Jesus Christ. All the month, all the years that you lost at that dead end, you can't get it back anymore, but you could get out of it now, right? For some of you listening, probably you are, you've been at a single or same place over and over and over. You pray, you kind of repented, you were kind of sober for a little bit, and you went back to it, and you're there over and over, and it's a repeated cycle. It's time for you to wake up and really sober up and be vigilant. And you need to really understand that, you know what? I can't do anything on my own. I'm just going to be stuck at dead end. All this false, you know, hope that my flesh is telling me, devil's telling me, my family's telling me, you know, my friends are telling me, my coworkers are telling me, it's all false hope. I will only find true hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. And whatever he tells me, through the word of God, you know, through preaching, you know, that's what I'm going to follow. Amen. And then what happens? You actually could back up a little bit. Yeah. What happens, though, when you back up, it's a lot harder than going forward, Right? I don't know why I'm talking about bears a lot today, but you know, if you're facing a bear, you never show them your back. They're going to come and eat you alive. So you have to walk backwards. So if you're on a trail and you see bears, and you see bears with cubs, mama bear are very angry seeing you and seeing you as, you know, next meal, you have to walk backwards. Walk backwards, very slowly. Pray that you don't stumble and fall. You've got to walk backwards, 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 and hope that campsite shows up or you know, people show up or mama goes, you know what, you know, it's not worth it. You know, he doesn't look tasty enough. You know, he's too skinny. You know, she's too you know, small. Yeah? So you walk backwards. And it's harder, a lot harder. But you have to expect it. If, you, if you've been stuck at dead end for years of your life, facing the same thing, facing the same road, facing the same problems, which you haven't been able to get out of, even though you are so-called Christians, it's time for you to break that pride and stubbornness. It's time for you to just really you know, get down on your knees and just let it out to the Lord. And like, Lord, I've been stuck at this dead end for years and years of my life. And truly, I can't get out of it anymore. I don't know where to go. That's where you have hope. That's when Lord can help you. That's when there's going to be a solution in your life. That's when there's going to be a little bit of light. That's when there's going to be a direction right direction, you know, chiming on your phone or on your car, you know, back up 100 feet, back up 1,000 feet. For some, you don't have to back up too much because you're not in as big a, you know, trouble. But for some, you're in deep trouble. You've been stuck at that dead end for years. You might have to go back a while, right? You might have to go back a while, but you can't keep up anymore. 
I mean, this might be your last chance to get out of that dead end because Lord's merciful God. However, if you constantly reject Lord's chances over and over and over and over, there may come a time where you have to actually pay it now. You have to reap what you have sown. Then there's no more chance to get out of that dead end, right? Because if you live after the flesh, you shall die. Yes. Then there are no excuses, but that it's over. Who wants to finish their life or finish their Christian life at a dead end, right? I want to go straight on that highway, right? Straight on that highway where I could just freely drive, go to places, and do the work of ministry, you know, lead people to the Lord, you know, and then be a, live a free, like free Christian life, right? Truth shall set you free. However, for some, you're stuck there. You're not relying on the truth. You're just relying on yourself. You're just not wanting any of Lord's help. You don't want to find strength in the Lord. You want to find strength in other stuff. Then, don't complain to your mama, your daddy. Don't complain to anybody. You created that on your own, and you'll be stuck there forever until you change. And that change comes from within. That change does not come from someone telling you something. That change does not come from someone pushing you, right? That change comes from your heart. That change comes from within. And you have to search your heart and examine your heart. Do I put my strength in the Lord Jesus Christ? When I'm at a dead end, do I try to find strength each time in the Lord Jesus Christ? Do I realize that I'm at a dead end in certain or many aspects of my life? When you recognize and realize that and when you go to the Lord, there is going to be a solution. There's going to be a way out. You might have to back up some. You might have, you're going to hit some bumps on the road. But Lord's going to resolve it for you when you trust him all the way. So don't stop. Don't be stuck as a dead Christian. Believe the words, verse, right? Believe the words and practice the words. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Let's pray. Dear Father, we go to our daily Christian lives and hit dead ends and just stuck there as dead end Christians because we rely on ourselves and others and our feelings and our stubbornness and pride gets in the way and we're just stuck there, Lord. Heavenly Father, I pray that as we get out of this or try to get out of this dead ends in our life, help us to just trust in you, come to you, confess our sins, get right with you. However many feet and ways that we need to back up and find the right road, Lord, help us to do it. Give us strength, Lord. And each day, Help us to find strength in you, but nothing else. We pray for Pastor Mike Shrive. Lord, please be with him. Strengthen him. Encourage him through your word. And I pray that you will heal him according to your will. I pray that you bless the upcoming summer camp. I pray that many souls, everybody will be challenged to serve you better. I pray that you bless the rest of the day. And even so, come Lord Jesus, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.